Welcome to another AI video tutorial. Today I want to show you something interesting, a way to transform normal videos into something more extraordinary. You probably saw on Shorts and on TikTok all kinds of cool transitions from one video to another, or videos that keep repeating seamlessly. Today I will use Kling AI with Google Whisk Nano Banana and CapCut to give you some ideas you can use for your projects. Are you ready? It all starts with a video that can be something you recorded or even an AI video. I am using CapCut for video editing, but you can use any other video editor. I recorded this video where I start with no movement, it is only a paper and a marker, then my hand enters the scene and picks up the marker and it draws a stick figure, and then I want to end in a static scene with that paper and drawing, so I can use the start and end frames for AI animation. I recorded a little longer so I can check where it starts with no movement, so I can cut there and use that end frame for expanding the video. So I need this frame from the video, and this frame also. To export only that frame in CapCut, here is how I do it. I go to Menu, then Help, and select Shortcuts. Here I go to Basics, and I have this option for exporting still frames. You can add any shortcut there. I added Ctrl plus S, but choose what works best for you. Save those shortcuts. Then at the end of the video, I use that shortcut, and you can choose the name and the folder where you want to export. For resolution, since Kling AI can do full HD only, I will choose 10, 80p, and then export it. I will do the same for the first frame. Now if I go to that folder, you can see I have both the start and end frames saved as images. Now I go to ChatGPT and upload both images. First, I start with the sketch, and then I end with the marker on paper, because I want to loop. I want my video to end with the marker and then continue again with the video when I draw the stick figure again, creating an endless video. I have a custom GPT, but you can tell ChatGPT you want a video prompt for Kling AI, and usually it can do it. Now we go to the Kling AI website, to the video generator, and we use image to video. We go to start frame and upload. We select the sketch for the first frame because that is where our video ended. Wait for it to load. Then go to End Frame, and select the image with the marker. For the prompt, I use the prompt ChatGPT gave me. It is important to have no camera movement in this case, since my original video does not have camera movement. I do not use sound effects since they are rarely accurate. I use the professional mode, and I use 10 seconds to have time to do all the things I asked, but it depends on the case. Sometimes 5 is okay for something fast. I am using the latest model at this moment, the 2.5 Turbo. Then I click Generate. The result was this one, where the stick figure comes alive and runs and gets that marker back to the scene, like it is preparing for the next scene, and it goes out of frame. Then I can download that video without watermark. Back in CapCut, I go to the end of the video and I add the AI video at the end of my video. Now you can see there is a smooth transition from my original video to the AI video. To see that it is loopable, I can copy and paste both videos once again at the end, and you will see that once the stick figure drops the marker and goes out of the scene, my hand comes and picks up the marker and draws a new stick figure and so on, continuing forever in the loop. This can bring more views to your short video on social media if people watch it multiple times. If you are using another video editor that does not have export still frame, but most of them probably do, you can export the original video using the full HD resolution. Click Export. Now you can open the video in a media player that lets you export a frame. I use Media Player Classic, and I can go to the frame I want, like the end frame, then go to File and Save Image, and that will save that image. Then I can go to the beginning of the video and do the same thing. There are also free websites online that let you extract frames from a video. Let's move to the next project. Here I recorded a video where I show an egg to the camera. Then I keep the egg in one hand, and I try not to move the hand. Then I decide where is the best place to cut so I can get a continuation with AI from that point. I will export this end frame now. In Kling AI, I will use that end frame as the first frame. This time, I do not want a loopable video, even though you can do it like you saw before. 
I just want to extend my video from a normal hand with an egg to a dinosaur that comes out from that egg. For the prompt, I use this prompt to explain with details how the egg cracks and how the dragon acts once it gets out from the egg, and no camera movement. I turn off sound, and I use 10 seconds, since I do not want it to come out very fast because it is just a baby and it needs time. The result is this one. The egg cracks open and then a cute baby dragon comes out, and it is quite realistic. If your input image is realistic, the result will look realistic. If your image looks 3D, the result will look 3D. So use real images when possible, or images that look real. Back in CapCut, I can add that video at the end, and it should be a nice transition from my hand to the AI video based on my hand. But the problem is that we do not have control of how the dragon looks. We can fix that with an AI image editor like Quen Edit or Nano Banana. In my case, I will use Google Whisk that uses Nano Banana and is free. On Google Labs, I will access the Google Whisk tool. You can find tutorials for it on my channel. On the left, where it says Subject, I will upload that end frame with my hand empty. Wait for AI to analyze the image. Then in Settings, make sure Precise Reference is active since that uses Nano Banana. For Ratio, I want to keep my ratio, so I will use Portrait in this case. For the prompt, I add what I need to be changed, like make a realistic cute dragon come out from the egg. I can hit run once or twice to have more options, and I can generate again if I do not like the results until an image looks good. I can make a red dragon if I want, and it looks pretty cute. After a few tries, I liked this version, because it has some shells here that look like they belong to the original egg. If there are no shells around, AI probably will make them vanish somehow, and I wanted to avoid that. Then I use Photoshop to crop the image to 16 to 9 ratio to make sure it is more consistent. Then I use ChatGPT for the prompt again since it can explain better than me how the motion and animation should be. Using the empty hand for the start frame, and the hand with the dragon for the end frame, adding the prompt, and generating with 10 seconds. The result is this one. You can see how the egg breaks and the shell falls on the desk. It is not perfect but good enough, and the dragon is quite cute, so we can control how it ends the video. Maybe the dragon holds our logo or product, or maybe our logo comes from the egg, so be creative. Now in CapCut, we add that AI video at the end. In this case, there was a tiny color shift, like my hand had a more yellow tint in the AI video. So it is not always perfect, but many times you can get away with it, and you can use the end of the AI video to create another video, and so on, until you go back to the first frame of the first video if you want to create a loop. For the third project, I recorded myself opening a box, and then I put my hand there waiting for a creature to come out of that box and rest on my hand. You can do maybe your hand next to a tree, and a creature comes from that and jumps to your hand, and all kinds of crazy ideas. I will export this end frame with my hand empty. Using ChatGPT to get a prompt for a spider that comes from the box. Using only that start frame with the prompt, and I got this one. Keep in mind that for creatures with a lot of legs, it can make more mistakes, like the number of legs, and sometimes it morphs from one leg to two, and so on. Here it is in CapCut with that AI video placed after my video. Again, there was a color shift, but maybe those who are good at color adjustments can fix this color shift. It happens only for some videos, not for all. The spider comes from the box and rests on my hand. Maybe next time I will use a bigger box and a closer shot so AI can see more pixels there and get more details. Here I have a shell on the desk, and I recorded myself picking up that shell and looking at it, and then I place it back on the ground. My idea was to do an AI video before my actual video, like the shell on the beach, and then make a transition into my video where I pick up the shell. So in this case, I will export that start frame with the shell on the desk. Then, in Google Whisk, I added it to the subject, and I asked to replace the background with a beach and sea. In my mind, the color of the desk was similar to sand color, so maybe the transition will work better that way. I selected this image with the shell, and I cropped it in Photoshop to be the exact 9 to 16 ratio, since the Google Whisk images, even if they say 9 to 16, are not exact. Then, for the start frame, I used that shell on the beach, and I end with my shell on the desk. Using this prompt from ChatGPT and a 10-second generation, I got something okay. Let me show you in CapCut. 
I add that AI video at the beginning this time, so let's play it to see how the water of the sea moves, and slowly the sand is morphing into my desk. Then, at the end, my hand comes and grabs that shell and inspects it, and then places it back on the desk. After that, we can do another video and another one and go back to the beginning if we want to create a loop. For the next video, I recorded the camera moving closer to a plate with leaves. Since for many transitions you need something in motion, I will export the first frame with the plate. Then I go to the end and export that frame also. This is just a quick example to show what you can do with ordinary videos like a simple plate with food. In Google Whisk, I upload the first frame with the plate, and I asked it to zoom out to show the table in an exotic Paradise Island location. I had to find one that has a similar background on that table since some were not exact. This one looked interesting. In Kling AI, I used the last frame as the first frame, and I want the camera to move forward through the leaves until it ends up in that exotic location. For this, I put 10 seconds, but probably 5 seconds would have worked better. Let me add it in CapCut to see it better. So I get close to the plate, and there is some movement. It did not come exactly as I wanted, but maybe I can make it work. The movement is a little slow in the beginning, and it takes too much time. With that video selected, let's go to Speed, and we have Curve. We can use presets to adjust how the speed acts over time. For example, this preset will speed up the end, and this one will speed up the beginning, and you can even adjust it manually from here. Let's test it now with that speed up in the beginning. For me, it looks much better now with that speed change at the beginning. But can we make it loop now? Like get back to the first plate? Let's try. I will use that exotic location as the first frame, and then the original plate for the end frame. So basically, for the prompt, I want the camera to move closer to the plate. For this, I used 5 seconds. Now you can see how the camera is getting closer to that plate so we can have a loop. But let's test it in CapCut. The camera moves forward and then goes down to the plate, but it is moving a little bit too slow for my taste. Let's see if we can fix it. With the video selected, let's go to speed and this time I will use standard. Let's put maybe 1.5 for speed and test it. I think now it looks a bit better with that speed change. Let's duplicate all the videos to see if it loops back to the beginning. So the camera is getting close to the plate, moving through the leaves, and we land on that exotic location, so it loops just fine. For the last example, I want to do something I see a lot on TikTok where the camera moves forward and it transitions to a new scene that looks believable. For this video, I recorded myself getting closer to the pan, and I cut it where the frame was more stable and clear. I exported that end frame. I used that as a start frame, and for the prompt, I tried to think of what scene looks most similar. For me, it looked like a metal grate on a wet road, so I prompted for something like that. On the first try, I did not prompt the camera movement correctly, so instead of moving forward, it went back, but it could still work. Let's test it. So, we go into the pan quickly, and then suddenly it moves back and shows something else. The transition is smooth, but maybe it breaks the flow a little. What do you think? Let's give it one more try. This time, I adapted the prompt so the camera moves forward and slightly upward. Now you can see the camera starts the right way. Let's test it in CapCut. So we go closer to the pan, and then the camera keeps moving forward, and it shows those metallic grates that go on and on, and it starts to show more of the road. I believe the transition works quite well now. If you found something useful, please leave a like and a comment to help with the YouTube algorithm. Do not forget to check the Discord for prompts and resources. I will put the link in the video description. Thank you AI Titans for your support, and everyone who subscribed to the membership and helps this channel keep going so I can create more tutorials for you. Have a great day and I will see you on Discord.